this year? Yeah, I think, first of all, there's multiple positions that we've been able to find some talent or take big steps forward with the group of guys that we had here, but certainly inside backer will look a little bit different. Um, you know, truthfully, we've got a little bit longer. Um, hopefully, as we see it on the field, we've gotten a little bit more athletic. And like we've had in the past, we've got guys who play violently and play hard. So uh, uh, you're, you're also hoping that, and I believe, the depth will be there where you can play more and more guys. I know there's a lot of guys in the room that believe that they are starter material, and they are, but only two can start. So hopefully we can play a bunch. Do you mind stepping on up Thank you. When, when you say play a bunch, what's the most you've ever played at inside backer? And where you could keep guys fresh, but also for the Yeah, the most probably I've ever played is four okay. for two positions in your normal base down packages, yeah. but then there's also been situations where you could get one or two more in situational packages, whether it's third down or, or maybe against big personnel groupings or things like that. So, you know, four normally, but then you hope with the talent level going yeah. up, you can get more in packages. Okay. You know, obviously you're bringing in a kid who played for you at Cincinnati and Luke and at, at Arkansas last year. How, were, how involved were you in that recruiting process? I mean, obviously Luke knew him, you knew him in, in getting him here. We were involved because of relationships that we built, both of us. I will say, Jaheim, okay, knew us and ultimately he, he wanted to be with us, um, but it's because of relationships. So the recruiting, quote unquote, recruiting process of Jaheim happened for years at Cincinnati. That's when it happened because of relationships and trust, which take time. When you look at Jaheim, maybe a bigger inside linebacker, yeah, I think both of us hope he has situational roles and normal down and distance traditional roles too. And and that's what we're really talking to him about is hey, how, how fundamentally sound and consistent he can he be as a traditional linebacker in those normal situations, and then how can we use his skill set in situational packages? You're exactly right. And and you hope you have the tools to do that with multiple guys within the group. With, with Austin, I'm just curious, what, what did you think of about the way he held up in the nickel against LSU? And do you see that as a long-term fit for him, or is, is he going back to safety at some point? Yeah, so the, so the great thing about it, I thought he learned and played very well. Like you, I don't believe anyone would realize that that was the first game he played at nickel, right? And that was against some serious skill. We know that. So I thought he did a great job. I think that gives us the tool in the toolbox to be able to play with a big nickel. And there can be times where you want to truly play, quote unquote, a three corner, third corner at nickel. And now we have a big physical body that can play that too. If people are trying to swing bubbles and nows out there, or maybe you want to play a little bit more zone or whatever the case is, it gives us more tools because he showed he can handle it. Yeah, I think, I think that uh, all of us would say, Coach Fick would say, we probably didn't figure out athleticism in space during spring practice as much as we would have liked to because you're limited in how much you want to tackle in the spring and how much you want to go to the ground. We need to find ways to put people in those space situations, which exposed us a couple times last fall, and really identify so we can improve there. Um, and then also the other thing is you want to find out, and we, we'll do a better job this spring, of, when it really gets tough, when it's really um, crunch time, who, who has that extra to pull out? As a coach, maybe looking at last year, how do you reflect and look maybe at ways to improve this offseason? Yeah, I thought that um, I wish we could have identified our strengths faster. I do think we adapted as the year went on, um, which happens in year one. I wish it would have happened faster. You know, that, that's what I look at. Um, identifying and playing to strengths is something we take pride in and and hopefully we can start with that right off the bat and any adaptations happen sooner I look at that uh, I don't think we affected the quarterback as well and and uh, sometimes it's trying to get more and more people that are great pass rushers but sometimes it's hey, what do we need to do in terms of our our plan and and how much we pressure what types of pressures to affect the quarterback more so there are some things we sat back and reflected on without a doubt and I will say, we're spending time sharing those with the players, too, so they know what they are, and they're attacking them as well. Luke mentioned the importance of dominating the edges on 
both sides of the ball, the tackles, tight ends, and the rush guys there. How, how big of a role defensively will your two outside linebackers play this year? The, the transfers that you brought in, what do you think they can do in terms of affecting the pass, affecting the running game? I think that's huge to our defense as a whole, first of all. So the impact our outside backers have on our defense, um, regardless of what names or yeah. new guys come in, it's mm -hmm. absolutely huge. And when you're great, those guys are very, very impactful. Um, I think that John and Leon both have shown that they can have a great impact. They uh, have some natural pass rush. They have some physicality. They have more length than we've had. Um, they've had success at this level of ball already so they've shown they can do it and um, they're here because they want to be a part of this which is a fantastic feeling too so they're all in and i think they will have a huge impact that position has to